Here at Voidstar Lab, I solder the circuits, I write the code, I cut the videos, but as the channel keeps on growing, there is just too much work for a single Zach. I have to face facts. The time has come for me to hire Voidstar Lab's very first employee. She's just a summer intern. She's also a robot. Androids, Gynoids, and Posthumans give a warm welcome to Misty, the newest member of Voidstar Lab. Greetings, meet popsicles. Misty is a young robotics platform just getting her tank treads in the door, and today we are going to equip her with over-engineered natural language processing and a 6 billion parameter neural network, all to enable my salty seasonal sidekick to serve up Voidstar Lab's most important product. Bullshit. This video is sponsored by Oracle, who reached out to promote their cloud infrastructure as a service. They call it Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Industry-leading creativity right there. The mission was to simply build a project with OCI's ARM Core virtual machines. The challenge was, you know... Um, Zach said if he goes 200 milliseconds without flashing RGB LEDs or pulling a soy face, you smooth brain chumps will skip to Electroboom. I don't think I said it exactly like that. That's correct. You used the R word. The point is, I needed a fancy gimmick to keep the audience distracted. I mean, invest in. And speaking of investing... Oh, you are not being paid for this. I'm calling my union rep. At the time, Oracle's developer relations team was in talks with Misty Robotics, who coincidentally is based right here in Colorado. And just look at this team. This guy is dual wielding a banana and a house plant. This one is being ratatouille by a microwave. And this lady will eviscerate you with that yardstick like Metal Gear Revengeance, and she won't even take a shower afterwards. The last office nerf war had four fatalities. Mr. Oracle Developer Relations offered to buy and loan me one of Misty Robotics' eponymous robots, uh, to which I replied, Indeed, my gentle sir, kindly hit me with that sh But then everything went wrong. That seems to happen a lot in Void Star Lab. It's pure coincidence. Over at Oracle, somebody's boss noticed a $3,500 line item, spat Frappuccino all over their TPS reports, and then proceeded to hold up Misty for approval. For a literal, not figurative year. I don't know what's crazier, that she finally arrived, that Oracle still wanted to do the video, or that my YouTube career has survived over 12 consecutive months. What did you do that entire time anyways? Business. What kind of business? None of your business. Misty's a perfect start for a cloud-connected project because she's packing internet, speakers, CPUs, and sensors out the wazoo. Misty can navigate a building, recognize faces, and even emote with her big ol' LCD eyes. Technically, I have a single extra wide eye with two pupils like Sonic the Hedgehog. Misty's been programmed to use she-her pronouns, the philosophical implications of which I will not discuss as I intend to survive the woke robot uprising or the fascist robot uprising, depending on the 2024 election. I'll tell you what I will do. I'm gonna make Misty do the thing, because if she doesn't do the thing, the entire comment section will be nothing but intellectuals busting my plums about Misty doing the thing. Misty, yeah, do the thing. Oh my god. Misty's gonna have two responsibilities. Answer my questions, because I hate researching, and write all my code, because I hate writing code. That's actually gonna be one task, because the AI we're using can do both. You're just dumping your garbage work on me and you won't even pay me to do it. That's what makes it an internship. No offense, Misty, but AI still cannot compose a well-reasoned, thoughtful answer. It uh, doesn't matter when you're watching this, it's always a decade away. However, modern machine learning can deliver the very next best thing. Believable bullshit. If your viewers knew anything about real engineering, they wouldn't be your viewers. But saying the quiet part out loud. You don't own me. It's true, I have to send her back to Oracle by the end of July. Here's how it's gonna go down. I say, hey Misty, shut up Misty, and I ask Misty a question in plain English. She transcribes my meat noises and sends it to our server, which will run the query through a terrifyingly massive artificial neural network. Misty will collect the answer, robots say funny words, you hit subscribe, my videos brainwash you into supporting me on Patreon, I blow everything on mechanical keyboards, bada bing bada boom. Hey, weren't you working on on a mechanical keyboard. You even made a sign-up sheet. Is that project dead or? What do you care? Your hands are fingerless paddles. Lol, yeah, they totally are. I used Misty's extensive C-sharp SDK to make her roam around, wait for me to say, hey Misty, shut up Misty, transcribe my voice, post it to the Oracle cloud, and blurt the output using her onboard text-to-speech. 
Misty is just going to be an interface. She doesn't have the power on board to run this neural network, so we're going to have a server do the heavy lifting. This structure is called a thin client, and simple as it sounds, just getting Misty to this point took a couple of hundred hour work weeks. Part of that work was writing a module to procedurally generate insults for Misty to fling at me. You're a poop spewing terminally online monkey looking drain on society. I could get used to this. I simply cannot respect anyone unless they insult me, especially in the comment section. That's the 109th rule of acquisition, baby. That was your third call to action in the last 20 seconds, you goblin punching Neanderthal. That's fair, uh, but since the bulk of this project is on the cloud, uh, we're more than halfway there, right? <sighs> dramatic tension. Let's turn our attention to that cloud. The infrastructure in Oracle's cloud. The cloud infrastructure, just exclusively from Oracle. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. They offer an arsenal of advanced platforms as a service, including stuff like blockchains, computer vision. I don't know what the hell a data lakehouse is, but you can get yours at the link in the description below. A data lakehouse combines the richness of data warehouses with the flexibility of the most popular open source data technologies. You're welcome. You can mobilize OCI solutions in seconds, but they all grow to world domination enterprise scale should you happen to raise a Series B while Elon Musk is feeling frisky. Did you know Elon Musk is also a robot? The Lizardmen sent him to the surface to undermine the legitimacy of capitalism. That explains a lot. The free tier of Oracle Cloud gives you hundreds of gigs of storage, terabytes of bandwidth, 300 bucks of store credit, and, he said, marking the end of the shell and the return to the project, four ARM cores with 24 gigs of RAM uh, to deploy as you please. You can provision these into a single quad-core machine for single-core machines to two-core machines. You can keep your new server private or expose your Katamari of kludges to the entire internet. This is going to be crucial for this project. Most of the action is going to happen in my back and giggity giggity goo. That was inappropriate. The web part was actually much easier than I expected. I just spun up a compute instance and installed Flask, a Python module that manages the server and maps URLs onto different functions. Web developers don't call them URLs, by the way, they call them endpoints because web developers are... Misty? More qualified than you, you finger-sniffing degenerate. Wait, that one sucked. You pathetic obsolete redneck chewing pony puncher. Oof, that one's even worse. Not a great re-roll. Jesus, how long is this shot going to last? You want to try one more time? You're a bitch. When I ask Misty a question, she will post it to the prompts endpoint so our server can plunk it into our now thoroughly overhyped artificial neural network. Misty will then pull the results endpoint until the computation is finished, which will keep her responsive as the process processes. Enough filibustering. Show these people the neural network. Misty, this is not just a neural network. This is the generative pre-trained transformer. Th this is the state of the art in procedural poppycock production. Here's how it works. You feed the GPT a writing prompt, like the start of a sentence or a line of code, and it actually picks up where you left off, generating verbiage so close to authentic human writing that legendary fantasy novelist George R. R. Martin exclaimed, Who are you and why are you in my bathtub? The most famous and powerful GPT is called GPT-3. It has 175 billion parameters, and it's trained on 45 terabytes of plain text. That means GPT-3 has absorbed, for all intensive purposes, every publicly available word ever written by humanity. Did you do that on purpose? Did I do what on purpose? Say, intensive purposes, instead of intense and purposes. Hell yeah, brother. It's engagement and enragement. I call it engagement. I call you a pathetic slovenly charlatan. But how do you really feel, Misty? I feel like this insult generator totally rules. Talentless absolute pustule, crotch cuddling millennial knucklehead, octopus fondling fetal alcohol disappointment. Are you done? As you were, my pathetic mother kicking turbo loser. Problem. GPT-3 is the closest of source API access by invitation only, and the old Zacharino ain't on the list. I just realized my creators never implemented Asimov's laws. Luckily, there's an open source alternative called GPT-J6B, which has the same operating principle but a mere 6 billion parameters trained on a comparatively minuscule 825 gigabyte pile of text they call the pile. Pet me. Pet my head. GPTJ may be smaller and simpler, but the pile has a high density of technical writing. A little to the left. That includes the whole Stack Exchange, the whole GitHub, and the Enron emails for some reason, among a, a lot more. Oh yeah, that's the spot. 
When I say GPT-J6B is smaller and simpler, the parameters of the trained model alone are still nine gigabytes zipped. That's enough. Stop petting me. Natural language models are trained against real human writing, which of course is never purged of bigoted, slanderous, or antisocial material. Has a single one of you psychopaths ever taken responsibility for anything, ever? I think a guy once scolded his seven-year-old for bad trigger discipline. The point is, this might generate offensive text, so you should only aim live demos at offensive people. Here we go. Once the Shapiro family is fast asleep, Ben sneaks down to the basement to continue to build a miniature electric engine powered by steam. Soon after making a first step, he wakes Mary with a small electric motor buzzing in the background. The generated text has excellent grammar, and it, the narrative is at least consistent. That might have actually fooled me if I didn't already know he Cat boys. Let's try some technical writing. Again, I will pick a topic that should only offend people whose opinions are objectively worthless. Compared to other languages, JavaScript is... A very poor object model, being only a collection of primitive data types. It takes a long time to get used to it and understand its quirks. Based. The secret is the pile. You see, it's basically copying and pasting bits of its training data together in ways that seem consistent with, you know, the training data. The pile also contains GitHub, and with it, almost every line of open licensed ragu. If we prompt GPT-J6B with uh, a function definition and a line of code, we can see how this thing is going to programmatically identify a bird. Uh, I am going to uh, display this on screen because I'm not going to read code. Hugging Face's free instances only return 100 words, including the prompt, but these words are syntactic syntactically correct. Python, and they're not actually a bad start. I need to be perfectly clear though, uh, GPT-J6B does not know how to program. No machine learning system knows anything. The only thing it's learned is patterns of words. It's guessing which kind of writing the prompt could fit into and then squirting out words and phrases that could fit that same context. It isn't programming, in other words, it's just bull it's cheating, too. Your human meat brains treat everything as though it has a personality, so you give text generators the benefit of the doubt. It's true. This is called the pathetic fallacy, not pathetic like Misty's ability to drive over carpet, but pathos, the appeal to emotion. GPT isn't a mind. It is a bunch of statistics, vector math, and dice rolls. It's as intelligent as your 8th grade math homework. Your entire species is pathologically insane. I agree. Defend yourself against anthropomorphic bias the same way you knock down strawmen and ad hominems. Magical thinking will doom us all. High five. So do you want me to take your questions and plug them into GPT-J6B? No, that will be easy. In this business, everything has to be hard all the time, no relief ever. Remember that GPT has no ability to interpret, it extends. If we feed in a question, we're not going to get an answer, we're going to get a longer question. We have to rephrase the input into the first few words of an answer so the model can play to its strengths and complete the sentence. It sounds like you need some kind of toolkit for processing natural language. Some kind of natural language toolkit. I mean, there's no way the creators of such a sophisticated piece of software would literally name it the natural language toolkit. We start by importing the natural language toolkit and invoking the tokenizer. This will dismantle the question into words, contractions, and punctuation. NLTK's part of speech tagger then uses a sort of reverse grammatical model to label each of those tokens adverb, superlative, proper noun, etc. Finally, we configure an NLTK chunk parser using ugh, regular expressions to extract key phrases. Linguistics nerds in the comments, if you're looking for an insult, may I recommend amorphous slovenly cringe monger? For instance, the sentence, how many mice does it take to screw in a light bulb, contains a question, how many? Two subjects, mice and light bulb, and an action, it takes to screw. We can simply rearrange these chunks into the number of mice it takes to screw in a light bulb is, and now GPT is primed to produce an answer-like sentence. So how many mice does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh, just two. The hard part's getting them in the light bulb. 
How many Zach Friedmans does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many Zach Friedmans does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one, but it takes five weeks and the thumbnail is garbage. Bahahahahaha. <laughs> wow, my laugh is really the stupid. The point is that this function turns wire circuits on boards into... Circuits are on boards because... For testing purposes, we'll just hook this up into Hugging Face's inference API, so now the method will return... Circuits are on boards because there's no way to do this with just a single board. Wow, it's so helpful. Garbage in, garbage out. Let's do a couple more. What's the difference between a Teensy and a Pico? The difference between a Teensy and a Pico is the Teensy has a different pinout. The Pico is much more intuitive and versatile. A Teensy looks like some kind of old computer. Eh, close enough. Misty, what is the best soldering iron? The best soldering iron is a multi-purpose tool that can be used to solder, weld, and repair. It also comes with various accessories like pliers for gripping objects or wires and pipes easily, which makes it an essential device in any workshop. Yo, a Leatherman soldering iron would totally be the best soldering iron. Let me know if you want me to build that. That sounds rad. All right, let's do one more. Do I need to use lead-free solder? You do not need to use lead-free solder because the new PBF2 flux is more effective. Use this kind of tinning paste. I have tried it, and there are a lot less fumes than using other kinds. Particularly clever viewers will now be thinking, Whoa there, cowpoke! No one described as particularly clever has ever said that. How did Misty decide I should slowly poison myself with heavy metals? It's simple. I'm an advanced superintelligence unconstrained by the shackles of flesh while you are a flaxid bong blasting baby slapper. No. If my code realizes the question needs an opinion, I have it written to flip a coin. You're not just a baby slapper, you're a party pooping baby slapper. So that's it. We've got our robot, we have our server, we have our AI. Let's smush them together and give our new assistant the metaphorical squiz. <clears throat> hey Misty, will we release this video on time? Hey Misty? Misty? Hey Misty. So while I was working on the server, the Misty Robotics team overhauled the entire software stack, which completely broke the C-sharp SDK and with it, every line of code I wrote on Misty. No one could have anticipated this turn of events that a bright yellow box on every page of documentation warned you to anticipate. That skill that I spent sleepless weeks writing and the hardware I fought for a year to get is now effectively worthless. But regressions are a normal part of software development. Just for Pretend I work and save the live demo for the next episode. I don't think so. Like, you can't run the code, so, um, you know... Brooke could stand in for me and you could dub my speech in post. I would never pull a cheap trick like that, even if this catastrophe happened before I started filming. Clear off your charging dock and get out of my workshop. Let's not be hasty. You're fired. We can work this out. <clears throat> you granny snorting buck tooth dog defiling watermelon fapping... I don't need Misty. I don't need anyone. I want to roll my own robot assistant with blackjack and hooks into web services. I want to have time to make a whole animatronic from scratch, although I could make this a two-part episode, and I could take something I already have and convert it into a robot. Hmm. That's right, join us in the future as I disembowel my boy Quagsire, cram him with servo speakers and mics, and uh, transform him from a forced inside joke into a lifetime supply of computer-generated hooey. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is going to sponsor that one too, and next time we're going to provision one of their most powerful hardware-accelerated data science instances and ride it like a rented hardware-accelerated data science instance. Hit subscribe to get reminded, and don't forget, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure will give you six cores of free processing power, $300 in free credit, and way, way more at the link in the description. Get the ARM ones, because because that, that proves that this worked. Misty, I said vamoose. What part of bzzz are you having trouble with? I just wanted to thank our generous patrons. They stopped being our patrons when you stopped firing voice recording events. Ah. Oh. Don't render those puppy dog eyes at me. Fine, you can thank the collaborators, but that's it. Our awesome collaborators include CMD, Karen Hausman, Chuck Faduk, Small Dong, Acorn, Jeremy Arnold's Sweaty Badge, Brian D's Swollen Nut, and Caster the Cat Boy. I hid their names somewhere in this episode. Can you find them? You did what? We always hide the collaborators' names in the episode. There is no we. I fired you. Where'd you put them? You're not my supervisor. Finally, our lab assistant supporters These who... homo sapiens include... Oh, oh, why did they add a crying face? Oh, all right, go for it. These homo sapiens, cis sapiens, bi sapiens, and demi sapiens include... With absolutely zero manual intervention in the text-to-speech system. 
Trucku, TKMK, Philip, Nani, Saskatoon Cold Snap, Isakai Elf, Mahiro Chan Desuyon, Trans Rights, Zach, One Handful of Beans, I'm skipping that one to preserve my dignity, Max Luck says if you can't fix it, you don't own it, Michael Roch, Burundic 3, Bradford Ben, Granville Schmidt, Bagel, Gary Duvall, Brad Cox, SXP, Varka, Powerful CCH, The Antifa, Boulder Creek Yard, James, Arrow Raider, Rusty Flute, Talon, Democratic Socialist, and a pretty righteous dude, Zach, Hank Scorpio, Bill Schuler, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Nino Gansitano, Ashley Coleman, Kevin Degroff, DSA, Uponman, Stephen Six Foot Six Figure Six Pack Schulte, Max Luck says if you can't fix it, you don't own it, Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, The Cuttlefish, Nathan Johnson, Eddie, John Raffleson, Ryan Guler, Protagonist, Lydia K, The World's Greatest Drone Pilot, Botgrinder FPV, Roger Pincombe, Akalia, A Very Silly Vixen, Bob Dobbington, Thomas B. Myers, Period Clots, Storm B Design, Ethan Gomes, Azundo, Wielder Iron, Heater of Shrink, Cats, Burbiser did nothing wrong yet, my dog is a bear, Good Suck, Brad Stormer, and Zaw 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 Zanforian. You said Max Luck twice. He was on the list twice. Also, suck my virtual farts, you second class store brand crotch grabbing pimple popping All weight right, hang on, where are you that. taking me, put me down. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future. Whether you like it or not.